I can't believe I'm doing this. Hey everybody, it is Quicken. And these are the X-Files. The X-Files. Yes! So, if you're new here, or if you are OG, The X-Files used to be a show where I would talk about my dating failures, but I kind of ran out of guys that I had dated. So the stories like kind of disappeared other than the ones I didn't want to share. And then I had this beautiful repressed memory come to life the other day and I have literally not stopped thinking about it. And I thought, hey, I know what'll make me feel better. Sharing my crummy experience with some dude to the internet where I have a series that allows me to do that. And yes, I am standing. I never really got justice on this one, but I will share it with you in the uh, vein of let's commiserate together. As I used to say on my old series of the X-Files, not to witch hunt these people, and that still applies. If you've no idea about that series, I have a full playlist. And I also have an offshoot where I tell stories about like terrible retail jobs I've had, retails from the crypt. I have a ton of those as well. I just like wonder like how unemployable I can make myself by sharing these things online, but I might just still do it anyway. Leave a like to uh, stabilize the foundation of my current employment. So this story starts a couple years ago and it, it starts in Philadelphia. And I was on Tumblr, on the blog scene and everything like that. And I was pretty involved in the local art scene in Philadelphia. You might not know. You know, I like to write short stories. I like to write poetry. A couple summers ago, I had a poetry reading. So I've never used a microphone before. I'm about to introduce myself as an internet poet. And don't feel bad if you weren't there. I literally didn't announce it until like four hours beforehand. And some of you guys still slipped in, which was really cool because we all went to the bar afterwards. A couple years ago, you know, I was pretty proud of the work that I was making and I wasn't really on YouTube. So there wasn't really a soapbox for me to be on. And that was something, you know, I really wanted. And it was a couple years ago. So really I was technically on YouTube, but I didn't really understand the ins and outs of YouTube and I kind of thought the only place I could be heard or seen was on Tumblr or in real life in Philadelphia. Some kind of like events and some sort of like live shows where I was like there, but it wasn't like a really big deal and it wasn't just me. It was like a collective that I would be a part of or I would go to like first Friday art events where you know hundreds of people were. So it was just like, too convenient and too amazing when this magazine reached out to me. And I say magazine, but it really was a zine. But at the time it was a zine I followed and it was a zine I was like, every time they came out with a new paper physical zine, I was so, so, so excited. Back then, like it was just crazy that they had followed me back. I was liking and commenting on everything, but back then Instagram didn't have a DM feature. So I was totally geeked and then the zine reached out. And to reach out on Instagram back before DM, someone would scroll really, really, really far back on your feed and they would leave a comment with like their phone number on it and then you would see it and delete it and then text them. So that's what happened to me with this zine. And all of this is happening pretty fast, right? And I'm super excited. So they hit me up and we do that like DM exchange. I also didn't have a smartphone at the time. I just had an iPod touch, which is how I would use email and use Instagram. I didn't have a laptop at the time. So it was kind of like my only access to the internet. And then I had a regular cell phone. If somebody messages you through iTouch anyway, it's your email address, Messenger. It's not your phone number anyway. So through iMessage, I messaged this person back and I was like, oh my God, like I'm such a big fan. Like everyone who's in your zine, I like end up following and it, you always like pick the coolest people and the coolest photos and the coolest locations and like the coolest styles, like a lot of like old hip hop styles and things like that. Like lots of core Philadelphia stuff I was so into. And then they were like, 
we want to interview you. So this was a huge deal to me. I had been involved in all these different things and I really didn't understand like what my purpose was or like how I could connect with people. And like I said, like I, YouTube at the time just like wasn't there and I thought, this is it. Like, I can't believe it. Everybody else who's always been interviewed has generally been men. And I was like, this is my moment. Like, here I am. Like, this is, this is really exciting to me. This wasn't a, this wasn't a zine I had never heard of. This was a zine that I had followed and my friends had followed and bought copies of. So we kept talking and I wanted to be like super polite. And sometimes I wonder if my level of polite either reads as flirtatious or if I don't like take any flirtation as a warning sign when I'm trying to be polite. And by that, I just feel like I deflect a lot of stuff and it's either conscious or subconscious. And all of that is just, you know, maybe I've been conditioned because people are like, I just told her she had a nice blouse, what's the big deal? And then I'm like, well, I would like if someone told me I had a nice blouse in a non-sexual way, so maybe that's okay if it happens and I'll feel it out for myself. I was trying to be super nice and just like polite and laugh at jokes and everything like that. And we set up a time to meet and I was super excited. So I, tried to get out of work early. I went home. I had planned out my whole outfit. It was the shirt I wore to Joanna Newsom tour. So I felt like it had good luck. It had good vibes. I wore these really nice shoes that my grandma had given me and I brought them upstairs to illustrate a point that I wanted to look really nice. I wanted to look professional and cool and clean because I was living in West Philly and Sometimes that wasn't always conveyed. And I wanted to look myself, but the nicest version of myself, the business bitch. So I arrived and it kind of like wasn't what I thought at all. And I don't want that to give everything away because it doesn't. And it was like eight o'clock at night, like, and I was like, okay. And I arrived and it was just like a house address. And I was like, okay. Normally when I meet up with people, we meet up at coffee shops. My favorite one's on Pine Street. This is not Pine Street, but I said whatever. I went to the house and he wasn't by himself. There was a lot of other people there and it was clear that this was like his buddy's spot and his buddy had roommates and this was like, you know, in my mind I was like, oh, he's probably not local. So like, this is how he like comes in and like meets up with all of his friends like in one swoop. And I was like, oh, that's, that's so cool. Like, this is how this stuff works. This is so cool, whatever. I didn't bring a notebook and pen. <laughs> so I'm standing there and there's like nowhere for me to sit and I just feel like, a little over prepared in the absolute worst way by wearing my little pleather loafers and my little Joanna Newsom button up good luck shirt. I'm just kind of like, is this even an interview? So I'm starting to be like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm such a nerd that I like think that this is like, an interview with a pen and paper or like a tape recorder and this is like really just a vibe and I'm so stupid and like I'm such a nerd and I'll always be a fucking nerd and someone gave me a little bit and I took so much of it when really this is just a vibe and it's gonna be like yeah, I met Quicken dot 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 she was super chill and that's the article and I'm, I still want it so I'm like, pass me a beverage. Like, I don't know. I like don't fit in at all. And like, I really just underestimated what the vibe would be. But I've, you know, I've read articles and stuff from people. Like if you've ever read Big Brother magazine, all of their interviews are like, I met this chick with a nose ring and for, I talked to her all weekend and then we got a hotel together and we drank for eight days and that was the skate tournament. Okay, it's a pretty good article. I could see Big Brother being a decent magazine. So I was like, all right, maybe this zine is trying to capture Big Brother. They invited 
quicken over to the house party and let's see what happens. Let's do this. I've been standing there for 20 minutes having this pep talk with myself. Literally standing there. No one's offered me a seat. Everybody's sitting down. There's not really a place for me to sit. The dishes are piled up. I don't understand what's going on. I'm straight edge in this story. So it's not like I can be like, I'll take a beer. Because then you have to reveal yourself that you're straight edge and it usually just makes like the vibe turn. Especially when people don't know and they think that you're gonna come over to drink. So all of this is happening and I haven't met the guy yet because he's not like attached to his zine in a physical form. His Instagram is just flicks. And I see him and it's like small talk. I'm kind of like, hey, I'm here. This is how I arrived here. This is what happens next. You get what I'm trying to say? I'll do it over here. I'm standing, he's here, and he goes, Why don't you take a seat? He was asking me to sit on his lap. His lap, his fucking lap. I felt so dumb. Like, I came all the way there. I had 10 crises on the way there that I wasn't gonna be cool enough. And then I got there and I was like, oh, this is just a vibe. And it wasn't, it was a fucking attempt at hooking up. I felt so dumb. So I was like, I'm gonna go. And I didn't stand up for myself. Don't think this, there's a, some sort of redemption in this. I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't say, fucking ew. And there were chicks there and we all weren't like, ew. I made up an excuse to leave. Cause I have no backbone in my back. Just a question mark shape and that's it. And the house was nowhere near my house by the way. So I had to walk so far to get to a train that went my direction and the whole way I just felt so dumb. I told my roommate I wore the shoes all for this fucking dude to And I felt so defeated. Like I was just some chick online that had to be lured in with the expectation of receiving some sort of big opportunity. Not that I was gonna be fucking recognized by Philadelphia Magazine for being in this paper zine, but it was something that was so exciting to me. And it was just, some way to express myself. And I was so excited to be a part of that. And really, it was just all about some fucking dude trying to make a fucking dick appointment. If that's all it was, like, I could see that. And when I think about maybe, oh, like, maybe the messages were flirty or something like that, it's like, or I was just being nice. You kind of get two chances. You can be a bitch so that people don't lure you to their friend's house to hook up with you under some false pretense that they're gonna be in your zine. So you have to put up your bitch shield and be a bitch, or you can be nice. And they think, huh, this girl's nice. That'll be easy. Dude, I felt so gross. I felt so defeated. So I left, I was still nice when I left because I was like, maybe if we were in a safe place, like a coffee shop, I would have my own seat and my own opportunity to share my story. Starry eyed, but not completely stupid. Just giving someone who I respected the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they had a couple beers. Maybe some of the other chicks sit on laps. Maybe there's a Big Brother article I haven't read before where the girl sits on the lap and then punches them in the face when they're done. That could be me, you know? A couple days go by. Hits me up on iMessage. Hey, hey, what happened the other night? Oh, 
I don't really party. I didn't really know what to do. Oh, okay. I was hoping we would have a good time. Ew. I said, well, we can go to a coffee shop or something. I'm free for a very specific time frame that has no extension and is not at night. No, maybe we can hang out at my house. Ew. I said, hey, I feel like this isn't an interview thing. You know, at the time, I wasn't dating my boyfriend, but we had been like hanging out, which is like nowadays you hang out for like a year before you date. And I guess, you know, it's good. You get everything in order. You get all your exes out of the way and you figure all this stuff out and you fix everything and you get your phone bill just in your name or some shit. You got a year to do it. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of how the kids work these days. I was seeing someone, but it was kind of loose, especially on his end, you know? So I didn't have a boyfriend and I didn't present like I had a boyfriend online, but it didn't mean that I wanted to be lured to somebody's house party under the false expectation that I was going to be in a zine that I dressed up nice for and brought fucking notes, you know? So I said, I'm seeing someone. And he said, oh, John? And I said, yeah. And he said, you know John's ugly as shit? Now this is a person who I had spoken to a couple times digitally, met in real life, and was horribly let down with the composure of a fucking saint. This doesn't meet my expectations, see you! Everybody have a blessed day. You know John's ugly as shit. The community we hang out in, you know, relatively big or small. You'll come to Philly and people will say, Philly's a small city, but they might say that in your town too. All that I feel like is just code for everybody who kind of does the same thing knows each other. For a while, I kind of knew all the vegans, not really anymore, I don't leave the house, but you know, for a while I kind of knew all the art kids. For a while, I kind of knew all the street artists. For a while, I kind of thought I knew all the skateboarders. Like, it's a small town. You know John's ugly as shit, right? So, wow, <laughs> yeah, I know, what? So I was like, that's not fair. And that kind of like deaded the conversation. Then I had, because I was on iPod Touch, the ability to screenshot this. Um, I didn't do it because the person I would share it with was the person who I was like, you know, trying to win over a little bit, put a, ring on my finger of being your girlfriend. <laughs> my toothbrush is here. So I was like, what am I supposed to do? Brag to John that I like avoided this man's advances and then like John is victorious over him who called him ugly as shit. If it was the other way around, would I want that screenshot? That was like, John, you don't want to sit on my lap? What? A man is ugly as shit. No tits. Um, so I kind of just like kept that message and kept that guilt and felt really weird about it because like the guy, and this is me feeling bad for the guy. The guy knew enough that I was hanging out with John by whatever I was either presenting online or what had been available vocally in the circle or just who I had been seen out and about with. I left the house a lot more then. So that information was like kind of available to him that I was maybe seeing somebody, maybe someone's girlfriend, I wish, but still, you know, somebody. And this dude was like, I got a zine and a lap to sit on. I bet I could get Quicken to come to this party. She'll sit on my fucking lap, bro. And I don't even have to write an article about her because she'll be my fucking girlfriend afterwards and I won't have to do anything for her. So I held on to that information for a little while, you know, until it just came up naturally 
when down the line this dude showed his true colors in however many capacities and at that time I was able to be like that guy called you ugly as shit but like I didn't agree with him I didn't stand up for you in a way I just like avoided his advances but here's the thing I wonder if I would have played along if I would have sat on his lap would I have gotten the article in the zine would I have wanted it because he was gross but like all of my friends read the zine and we didn't really know who he was so that would have been cool and all I had to do was sit on his lap or I was never gonna be in it anyway and he doesn't know how to flirt with girls so he had to sh give me this thing that I wanted and then it wasn't even real because he only put swag dudes in his zine to begin with and I was like I'm gonna be the first woman when really it was like how red could the flag be? So I bring all of this up because John was at a party the other night and that kid came up and someone said, John, don't say anything mean. That happened all those years ago and that happened with your chick. And John, as ugly as he is, said, hey, fuck you. And I said, hey! <laughs> Happy enough ending for me, man. Just been kidding. I was put in situations like that all the time. But I do know I'm not sitting on anybody's lap. Fuck. Ew. It's fucking nasty. Anyway, this has been The X-Files. I guess like I have been caught up in situations like that all the time. I didn't know how to add redemption to this story other than all I do now is like look for similar symptoms to this. And I don't know if it just makes me paranoid, you know. But anyway, I love you guys so much. Let me know what you think. Other episodes of The X-Files in the playlist and I can make more episodes of Retails from the Crypt as well. As long as I just don't get in trouble. I don't wanna get in trouble, not unemployment. Anyway, I love you guys.